Whilst cross-country bikes aren't designed specifically for doing jumps, they can be used for moderate jumps and drops if done properly, so here's how to do it. Cross-country mountain bikes have a lightweight frame and components and are designed for speed and efficiency on the trails, which makes them less suited for more aggressive jumps and drops. Also, whilst the low front ends and bars are really good for climbing and bombing across country, as you'd expect, they're not so good for jumping. And for this video, I'm gonna lower my seat because I've got a dropper post. Before you start, make sure your bike is in good condition because compressions on takeoff and landing are gonna put extra force through your bike. You might also actually wanna put a bit of extra pressure in your tires. If like me, you're running a super lightweight cross country, uh, lightweight carcass tires, then you might find that they squirm a little bit. If they're too soft and you're pushing hard into a takeoff, or even on landing, if you land slightly sideways, the tire might squirm and that can cause you some issues. So I'm up into the high 20 PSI, so 28, 26. You might not usually wear protection when you're riding your cross-country bike, but if you're learning to jump on it, it might be time to think about wearing some pads. Today I'm not, but I do have full length trousers and a top, so a bit of abrasion resistance at least. Modern cross-country bikes have changed quite a bit in the last few years. So like my Orbea Oys, the new version, Things are getting, you're getting a longer reach, you're getting a slightly slacker head angle, shorter stem. So that is making these bikes much more capable all round. But even with this bike, you've got to make sure that your technique is right because you're still dealing with a bike that has much lower bars and it's much more stretched out than you would have on like an enduro bike or a jump bike. So it does make things a bit harder and it means your technique has got to be really good. Okay, so for the first part of this video, I'm gonna show you how to ride jumps with my seat low, because obviously I've got a drop of post in this bike and it does make it much easier. However, later on, I'll talk about how to jump with your saddle high and it will be much more limiting. But we're starting here with a, a reasonable size takeoff, quite a long tabletop jump. So it gives me the option to just get a feel for this takeoff, see how it's gonna affect the bike before I have to commit to try and jump in all the way to the landing. My bike has got 120 mil of travel, which I can fully lock out or even have it semi-locked out with my squid lock. But actually for jumping, I'm gonna leave it completely open, which, you know, having a bit of suspension travel does make it slightly harder to get into the air, but it does give me a bit more of a forgiving landing should I not get it right. But really the trick to jump in a cross country bike or any bike is trying to be as smooth as possible. You can do this even on a, the most lightweight cross country hardtail. You can still jump them, but you've got to be smooth. And actually the technique of getting the bike into the air is the same, whichever type of bike you ride. It's all about using the transition. So coming from the flat into the upslope, that's that transition. And if you're trying to make height to clear a jump, that's when you need to pump the bike in and drive it up into the air. This jump here, actually, I can get a really good run into this. So what I'm trying to do is hit this at the perfect speed where I'm really not pumping the bike into it too much. I'm still doing it to settle the bike in and get some height because that's what it's all about with a cross country bike. I really want to make sure that when I'm trying to clear this jump, I'm not casing it or coming up short because with a bit less travel, that's gonna give you a really heavy landing. So I'm really trying to judge my speed and make as much height as I need to get me into that landing nice and smooth. The slower you go, the more height you're gonna need to make to clear that jump. And that's for the cross country bike where I might back out of doing it. Because if you're making lots of height and then you come up short, you're just gonna be landing really heavily. And like I said, with lightweight wheels and tires, it's not good. You do see sometimes people struggling with their tires pulling off or even wheels breaking. So what I'd much rather do with a cross country bike is actually go a bit too fast and actually soak up the jump. That means you can stay nice and low, clear the jump, and because you're not going high in the air, your landing is so much smoother. The way to soak up a jump, I think the best way of describing this is trying to kind of imagine there's a low ceiling. And if you hit this jump and go up, you're gonna bang your head. So you do need to go faster to clear it, but as you come into takeoff, 
you let the bike come up to you. So you need to be standing nice and tall as you're coming in, bars come up, feet come up, and then you stay nice and low and try and clear that jump. So these jumps are a really good example of why I'm trying to keep it really smooth, but also really fast. If you go really low and land in there and give it a big pump, you'll be absolutely flying along. So it's great technique if you're racing cross country. Here's a good example of some tabletops on a cross country trail where I'm really trying to jump as little as possible. It's quite fast into here, so you've got plenty of speed to take off if you want to but the landings are short and on a cross country bike, if you overshoot these, that's when you really do start getting into trouble because you'll land really heavily. So I'm trying to squash these as much as I can, get onto the floor, give them a really good pump and I'll carry so much more speed than if I try to jump them. So great, soaking up I think is, is the big thing to try and learn with jumping on a cross country bike. It's safest, fastest, smoothest way of doing it. But if you need to make height, then definitely come to a nice small jump to do this. And in this situation, it's going to be better than soaking up because if I soak this up, I'm not going to clear it and it won't be as smooth. So it's the same skill, no matter what bike you're on, but it's trying to remember to do it one wheel at a time. So driving your bike into that transition, getting the front wheel up and in the air, being slightly back behind the bike. So heels down, hips slightly back and then wait in there until your rear wheel gets to the top and then you stand up and forward to pop. So it's the same as the bunny hop technique, but much more subtle. You're not throwing your weight around as much. But really the key to this is kind of like the hop, doing one wheel at a time, front wheel, then back wheel. And then same into the landing. You need your front wheel to get there first and land and then your back wheel to match the angle of the down slope and then land after it. That is super important on any bike, but really important on a cross country bike. Because you're in such an aggressive position, it's much less sort of forgiving. If you uh, land your front wheel right at the bottom of the down slope, then your tire, it just isn't as tough. Those bigger compressions could cause you problems with a cross country bike. So be nice and smooth. Think about it one wheel at a time, front and then back wheel. If you don't have a dropper post and you're reluctant to put your seat down, because maybe you've got a lovely carbon post on a cross country bike, you don't want to scratch it up, then you are going to be limited. Uh, I would say if you're serious about properly learning how to jump, then maybe even buy a second shorter post and saddle so you can just swap it out, keep your nice post for racing or whatever. But it just means that with your seat high, um, you have to be even more perfect for jumping, which I'll show you now. Like I say, you'll be so much more limited that if it goes wrong, you can't then move around to try and save it. So with your seat high, you can still get a reasonable amount of pump into the bike on the upslope to get you up into the air. The problem comes in the air if you end up nose diving slightly too much because you misjudge it, then getting back behind the saddle is a horrible place to be. If you then land hard, you're going to smash yourself into the seat. But also, you really don't get much pump. So on these set of jumps, actually, you need to land them pretty nice and perfect, get a decent pump to get enough speed to jump the next jump. And you just can't get that good pump because your seat's in the way. For a really strong pump, I'm going to be behind the saddle and pushing down. And with a low saddle, that's easy. With a high saddle, you just don't get it. You sort of hit the seat and you don't get any more speed. So that's why you're kind of limited and there are some more risks jumping with a high saddle. Shorter travel light bikes are definitely more nimble. So you can throw them around on tight corners and get up technical climbs. But also they're more nimble in the air. You can really throw them around, but you can be caught out on windy days like today. But skilled riders should be able to ride both long and short travel bikes on most terrain and hopefully get confident on riding jumps as well. I love riding my cross country bike on all sorts of different trails, including jumps. And it just shows how capable these bikes have become. Give thumbs up if you love modern cross country bikes.